Good morning, Africa, and it is the second week of a revamped and, of course, reworked Jazz Siri that's coming to your screens right here on News Central. You are watching us on DSTV Channel 422, Start Time Channel 274, or you might be watching us on our YouTube live screen. Wherever you are joining us from, thank you so much and welcome. My name is Solu Lakwe Adele Rubalogun, and, of course, welcome and get ready for some more bold and, of course, brave conversations. Welcome to Just Siri this amazing week. We had a wonderful first week. This is the second week, so it promises to be on another level. My name is Omotunde Adeboale David. Welcome. It's another exciting week, and it's Gen Z Ambassador reporting for DC. I want to say welcome, because it's cliche. <laughs> nice and then, of course, <laughs> I, blessings mm -hmm. always makes me laugh. I don't know why she's sitting next to me. I don't know why she's sitting next to me. I can't even make my introductions properly. Anyways, guys, my name is Catherine Obey, and let's just end it there, punto. I really think, honestly, in other news, that um, there was a TGIM. Like, thank God it's Monday, because for me, Monday couldn't come fast enough. I missed you guys on Friday. Why would anybody Aww. thank God it's Monday? Uh, it's the beginning of another week. You can't get to a Friday if you don't get through a Monday. Thank you. Mm. That's uh -huh. a, Reply. That's a, that's Reply. A that's Reply. A I'm waiting. <laughs> so so not say something. And Gen Z's, because why would I be happy it's Monday? I, I could literally do Fridays every day. I don't care about getting through Monday. I'm like, oh, I'm like, but anyways, I miss them. I miss them. And, you know, I was practicing my, you know, uh, comedy career. No, uh, no, I, I, no, I saw how no. funny I looked. No, really? wow. no but we're not mirror. getting to it no, because please. it's Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, a lot of things happened over the weekend. I hardly could keep up. Imagine, just imagine, ladies, that you were served breakfast in church. Imagine. In the Lord's house. In the Lord's in house. In my father's house. house. No, Hot, like... steamy breakfast in church. Imagine sitting in church and you just heard the pastor announcing the next couple getting married. And it is your fiancé and another sister in the Lord. Yeah. That is Aww. Jesus' my what? You know, the, yeah. the brother in the Lord should be getting ready to meet the Savior. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> not. This, this would be a typical example of no grief for anybody, after all. <laughs> you know, yeah. See, I'm going to say something you don't like. When I first came back to Nigeria, there were a list of people I said I was never going to date. All the brothers in the Lord, brothers in the Lord, Nigerian lawyers, Nigerian ah. people in military or police. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. because let me t some of the worst people are in church. Yeah, let's just say yeah. that. Some of the bro um, the worst brothers. How about was, the so, so the always... thing is, you know, they always say that the church is a hospital. But what people don't understand is, it's not everybody that's responding to treatment. Ah, Gen Z. We took that right Gen out of my mouth. Gen Z. 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 G
Africa is rising. Again, we hear our sounds echo on the other side. Afrobeat and Afropop reinvented, hip life brought back to life, new energy infused into Kwaito and Quella. Africa is balling. Every stroke, every shot, every race, we find our place at the top. Taking the helm of real power, new hopes for democracies. A breed of entrepreneurial tigers, audacious storytellers, and a promising generation raring to go. Truly, Africa is rising. And this is where the stories that define our continent live. Welcome back to Jasiri. Remember that Jasiri is a daily program and we're here for you from Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. on New Central TV every day. You can follow the conversation live on YouTube and our social media handles. We are at New Central TV. Let us know what you're thinking by using the hashtag Jasiri. Now to the meat of the day. Our very first conversation explores the intersection of faith, governance, accountability and societal expectations as we converge within the walls of religious institutions. Well, Nigeria, a nation known for its rich tapestry of culture and diverse religious practices, has seen a profound influence of faith-based organizations. Now, the church, as a cornerstone of many communities, wields significant influence over the lives of millions of people. Yet, with this influence comes an inherent responsibility that is up to uphold principles of transparency, accountability, and, of course, ethical conduct. Now, in some recent years, we've witnessed a growing awareness and concern regarding the lack of accountability within certain religious organizations. And we've also seen how scandals have deeply impacted trust within the community. The recently released BBC documentary on the late TV Joshua has once again raised questions about the degree of control some leaders exert over their congregations and the potential consequences for individual autonomy as well as our collective well-being. Joining the discussion now is the uh, renowned leader and senior and founder of Trinity House, Pastor Itua Igodalo, on Jasiri this morning. Thank you, sir, for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Pastor Igodalo, let's start with examining some of the intricate dynamics that are happening between accountability, transparency, um, and the church. The church is the place where we go to seek counseling, healing, and comfort. And when that place becomes a place shrouded in scandal, a place where people end up being hurt, how does that affect the congregation and their faith in the men and women of God that they consider to be their spiritual leaders? Well, the same way that bad leadership hurts any group of people, anytime you have leadership that's bad or inadequate or unfair or unjust, definitely one or two people are going to be wrongly treated, badly affected. There's no equity, there's no fairness, and then it's going to really affect their lives. Definitely, I am it's a lot of Okay, uh, now there, there's a misconception that I would like to see, especially in Africa most of the times, where um, when an issue is raised, you know, about abuse, about misconduct by religious leaders, it seems as though it's an attack on the religious body itself. You know, this saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm, seems to have been misunderstood. So um, in the words of, um, you know, a very profound person, is there a way to separate the man of God from the God of man? A lot of times people feel like because, you know, these people are men of God, they're always right. And that is the... Um, I think that's the, that's the lie that we've shrouded ourselves in, where a lot of people believe that whatever they do is right, so we cannot judge them. Now, I'm not saying we should judge, but is there a way we can hold these people accountable for their actions? Well, they are indeed accountable at the end of the day. I mean, people may be led or misled by somebody for some time, but you cannot fool all the people all the time. 
at some stage the eyes of the people will open and they will definitely realize that they have been misled. Again, the Bible also says you should test the spirit. It is on, up to you to test the spirit that you have heard. It's like going to a bad doctor or going to a bad lawyer or going to a bad accountant. You go to an accountant, he's a qualified accountant, but somehow he's not practicing his profession very well and uh, you are misled. So it's the same onus on everyone. Uh, no one is perfect. Uh, even in the best of systems, there is somebody, they usually call a bad sheep or somebody who's not quite so competent. And therefore, the onus is on the public to actually take their decisions as to how they evaluate the kinds of religious organizations they would like to associate with. It's a free entry, free exit kind of policy right now. Mm. Uh, thank you very much, Pastor Igodalo. Uh, Nigeria, like many other societies, um, you know, we all grapple with similar things like the challenge of balancing the reverence of faith with the need for accountability. How should instances of misconduct or abuse be handled within the confines of the church? Or do scandals lead to a reevaluation of religious practices? Or do they deepen? you know, the root of skepticism, because right now, everybody on the streets are divided on this particular issue at hand. Please. Well, um, definitely scandals will lead to a revelation re of every organization and institution and groups of people. Um, definitely a lot of people will change their thinking when there's a scandal. And also, also definitely scandals also cannot be totally avoided in an imperfect world full of imperfect people. In the banking industry, you had scandals. In the financial industry, you had scandals. In the legal profession, you had scandals. Even among leadership in government, you have huge scandals. That does not mean a total rejection of the government. is okay. dealing with each aspect of the scandal in each uh, group. Uh, and then a lot of... Uh, organizations have umbrella bodies that uh, regulate them. Uh, the Muslims have that, theirs, the Christians have the Pentecostal Fellowship, and also the Christian Association. Mm -hmm. But at the end of it all, everybody is also regulated by government policies, decrees, rules, regulations, and pronouncements. Uh, so every religious organization is regulated, first of all, by the Corporate Affairs Commission, and then secondly, by the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So some things are unavoidable, unfortunately, because, like I said before, you live in an imperfect world. And there's almost no major religious body that has not been faced with one scandal or the other through its history. Okay, Even Jesus Christ himself, with his 12 disciples, was faced with a couple of scandals or threatening scandals. Uh, one was the scandal of relationship, the women amongst his means. They even accused Jesus Christ of being a drunkard and a lascivious man. And at the time of his biggest trial, he was faced with a scandal of betrayal and uh, abandonment, even by his own people, who were leaders of his flock. Between Peter and uh, Paul, there were arguments and uh, discussions and disagreements over the treatment of the Jews and the treatment of the, um, uh, the, the, the new converts, the Romans and the Greeks, okay, at that time because of this question of circumcision and Jewish practices. So you've always had where people are uh, some things that are not quite appropriate. Among the disciples, there were arguments all the time. Some people wanted to sit on Jesus' left and right. Some wanted to be leaders. Some even doubted the veracity of his um, powers and his uh, teaching, Nathaniel, and the one they called Doubting Thomas. So these things happen. We just have to deal with them as they happen and hope that over time you can involve improvements uh, in the system that will lead to some level of um, sanity and almost perfection. And the word is mm -hmm. almost perfection. Mm -hmm. Almost perfection. I'd like to pick your brain, um, Pastor, on what you think about restorative justice uh, within the context of the church. 
uh, both uh, for the individuals involved and for the congregation as a whole, restorative justice. I mean, how do you approach that? Well, by restorative justice, I mean you mean the, the kind of ruling that decides that this is the way to go, or if, do you want to explain to me what you mean by restorative exactly justice, that. if you don't mind? The, the kind of, yeah, the kind of yardstick, the kind of ruling that, you know, um, this, this kind of issue arises, and w w how do we lend restorative justice to this without, uh, I I in, the, in the same way, seeking a balance and making sure everything is fair? Uh, to the best. I mean, we know that, you know, not everything is perfect, but at the same time, there has to be, you know, I'm just looking at, there has to be some form of um, dispensation that would sit well with, with, um, with, with, with the congregation with and with people in general. The truth of the matter is that if you're really, really a Christian and you practice your faith, let me talk about Christianity, and you practice your faith like you should, and uh, you really, really want to be a true Christian. Christianity is very, very self-regulating because the Bible, which we base Christianity on, is very, very clear as to what you should do, what your rights and your privileges are, uh, how you should treat your leader, where you should tell your leader to stop, how you should evaluate your leader, and so on and so forth. The challenge here, though, is twofold. Number one, some of the pastors, some of the religious leaders, uh, sometimes deliberately don't expose their, their congregants to, 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 to the right or the appropriate teaching, deliberately or inadvertently or by mistake, uh, or even based on their own inabilities or incompetence. There's no pastor or religious leader or reverend or pope that knows it all. Uh, everybody is work in progress. You are studying. As you study, you know, you have tra transferred the knowledge. So for anyone, anyone at all, to believe that any leader is infallible and uh, is next to God or knows as much as God is the first um, uh, yeah, unfortunate yeah. thing. Let me describe it as unfortunate that anybody can uh, enforce or impose on himself. You must always give that room for 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 mistakes uh, and uh, in, uh, infallibility of of a leader. I know that from time to time he's really human, and he will make some mistakes or judge some things wrongly or misinterpret even scripture. The second is that you should also try your best to be self-taught. You know, there's no magical thing about it. Okay. Anybody who is a pastor, a reverend today, bishop, prophet was once an ordinary sinner who knew nothing, and over time has studied the Bible himself, grown in the spirit, prayed, fasted, and developed to where he got to. Anybody can do that. So people should learn to also study the Bible and develop a relationship with the Creator for themselves. Mm. Yeah, so I hear I was... you. I, I mean, I hear you, Pastor. I, I, something you said stood out for me. You said... Um, self-regulatory but you know uh, unfortunately sometimes that's not the case if we take a look at um, how, how events occurred stringently in the Old Testament if we're living you know talking about Christianity we see that even sometimes when people pray oh the God of the Old Testament is who I'm looking for come down and fight rain fire it seemed like justice was served almost immediately in the Old Testament and while we say that, yeah, well, uh, men of God are infallible, uh, there's are a tendency, or, or, or not infallible, not infallible. Mm -hmm. there's a tendency for people to hide under that umbrella and say, okay, so men, are, men of, of God are not questionable. Because whether we like it or not, it's very rare to see uh, people, Nigerians, uh, question uh, leaders of authority in the church. And then when you say people should get intimate with the Bible, and it, it, there are different interpretations. I can read uh, the book of John, chapter 10, verses 14 to 41, and interpret it differently from somebody else, from mm -hmm. Tolu here, or Blessings, or Lolo. So, I, you know, for me, that, that's a bit, that's just like a, a lean window where um, anything can happen. I mean, it's just, it's just before, it's, it's like that window be, between night and day, you know. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Pastor, before you answer that, because I, I get an idea of where Catherine is going. We've seen situations where the church will 
try to cover up accusations, not even investigate. And I'm not saying just the church in Nigeria or just the Christianity itself. This is an issue with religious organizations the world over. There are documentaries, there are court cases, and we find out that a lot of times members of these institutions, these religious organizations, have to go outside mm -hmm. for any attempt at justice. Mm -hmm. So do you think there is restorative justice to be found in the church? We've seen men of God confess to being tempted by the devil, mm -hmm. they have hands laid on them, and they're told that their sins are forgiven and they, and they walk away. And meanwhile, we have members in their congregations, we have Christians worldwide who are seeing these issues. So do you think there's even restorative justice to be found within the church itself when a lot of the times the church, one, wants to cover the crimes because it doesn't want it to leak and bleed onto Christianity mm -hmm. and the faith, and then two, Pastor, we have, to be, we have to be honest. A lot of people give autonomy over to leadership, to church leadership, to the men of God, to the women mm -hmm. of God, to make decisions for them, decisions on spouses, on jobs, on traveling. Yes. We, we can't sit here and pretend like we don't see those things happening. They happen, and it's uh, uh, fortunate or unfortunate that they happen, but that is the outcome of the society that we have. And of course, some people have used it to their advantage. Some people have used it to prey on people, and some people have been very honest about it, okay? You have a society that's broken, that's in incomplete. Everybody's looking for help, and sometimes the help they seek, even from government, they cannot find. They go to their religious leader, be it Christian, be it Muslim, and they look for guidance, okay? Um, and for them to think that that man that they're going to is totally infallible, is very unfortunate. Some even go to their babalawos and their idol worship leader too for exactly the same thing. Uh, it's just um, man's attitude and character to seek help or direction or information when he seems helpless or doesn't seem to have the kind of knowledge to try to get himself. That's mm -hmm. just the natural attitude of men. Men generally like to be led, you know, mm -hmm. and if they fall, into the hands of the wrong leader, be it Christian, Muslim, or idol worshiper, or even political leader, they suffer the same fate. And it is unrealistic uh, for anybody to think that because you're a religious leader or you're a Christian, you know everything and you're mm -hmm. perfect. And anybody who thinks that any man that he goes to has all the answers is also making a grave personal mistake. And it's a personal mistake because the man may pretend, the man may seem to, but definitely he doesn't. Okay. It's as simple Pastor as that. Ita, so this is, yes. uh, pa uh, this, Pastor, sir. This, this is the result of a lot of um, <laughs> ignorance. Yeah. Mm. Pastor, of um, mm. I just want to take your mind. I don't know if you're aware of a particular case in the UK, some a couple of years ago, where a man of God was found on homosexual charges and abuse of some of his congregants, he actually did go to jail and came back to church. Sir, would you say that is stretching the concept of forgiveness too far? Mm -hmm. Because if broken people are leading broken people, where is the wholesomeness that I believe the Bible and Christianity teaches? Well, I think your assumption is that a man who is broken is permanently broken. Mm. That does not happen, you know. Otherwise, none of us would be alive. None of us would be living, okay? So you must give people the benefit of the doubt and hope that somehow or the other, their time in penitentiary has changed and improved them. And if it has not, then time will tell. A man has fallen once doesn't mean he should be permanently on the ground. I think that also is unfair. And it happens to all of us. Uh, all of us have committed one sin or the other, one crime or the other, one malfeasance or the other. We've told one lie or the other. Therefore, should the whole world look at us as permanent liars? So you must give people a chance to recover and get back on track. That's the whole idea of going to jail. Yeah, uh, Pastor, so... We do agree, uh, in as much as we agree that people who are broken are not permanently broken, I think that we should not um, totally throw out the, the necessity for taking these people through rigorous trainings if possible. The fact that a pastor misbehaved and was punished for it doesn't mean he should 
come back to become a pastor immediately. If need be, he should be stripped of his position. If need be, he should be punished. You know, if need be. And then if if at all he needs to come back to being a pastor, he has to be held accountable for his actions. Because a lot of times you just go straight to don't criticize people and, you know, restore them back to their position. As much as uh, we know that nobody is perfect, we also do understand that we're all human. So um, that's one. And then secondly, um, Christianity does, you know, preach leniency and patience. But doesn't it now look like we've taken it a bit too far? Because the fact that we refuse to, and it's not just Christianity now, I'm talking about all religion, the fact that we have refused to ask for accountability from our leaders when we see things going wrong. Hasn't that now affected us, especially in the political setting where we cannot now ask for accountability from our leaders as well because we're now used to it? Well, first of all, that one incident should not be taken totally out of context. There have been many, many other incidences in Christianity all over the world where people have committed malfeasance, they've been stripped of their robes, stripped of their title, uh, gone into reclusion or poo or whatever it is. Some recover, some never, never, ever recover. There are many, many instances of that all over the world in different uh, religious organizations. Uh, each one treats his own wounded uh, 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 as it wants or in a typical fashion. So there will be many, many that have never, never been restored because of what they did and so on and so forth. Uh, there are many, many who have been stripped, many, many who never came back, many, many who even uh, died of a broken heart or died of depression. Uh, there are many. Uh, if you haven't heard about them, uh, you can do some research and you'll see that there are quite a lot of them. So that is not the usual form of justice uh, or treatment in Christianity. Uh, I know of a lot of organizations that deal very, very toughly with their uh, people who fall uh, out of line. I have experienced it before, I have seen it before, I have also done something similar before to people within my own congregation. So there is some form of treatment, some form of justice. Uh, I know that the Catholics have, the Anglicans have, the Methodists have, and of course, a lot of Pentecostal organizations have their own methods of dealing with this kind of issues, definitely there is. Uh, once in a while, one or two slip through the cracks. Once in a while, if the man is his own founder and senior pastor, he may adjust the rules for himself and seem to quickly restore himself and so on and so forth. Uh, if he's the head of the church and all that, uh, there's precious little anybody can do about it. If his uh, congregants continue to want to follow him despite his uh, weaknesses, uh, that's a personal choice. And there's nothing anybody can really do about that if he does not breach again any laws of the land where that uh, situation occurs. And these are normal and natural things. As for general leadership all over the place, uh, the challenge of leadership today, especially in Nigeria, possibly in Africa, is a lack or is a lot of ignorance, you know. Uh, even the Bible says it, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So the Bible encourages you to seek knowledge for yourself. Uh, where people are not educated, they're not exposed, where people cannot even connect governance to their condition, uh, the situation they find themselves in, where they cannot connect the lifestyle of the one who is leading them to their lack or facilities or whatever within the society, uh, how are they going to hold the leader accountable? They don't even know that they should hold the leader accountable. In some parts of the world, the people think that corruption is a necessary benefit of leadership. And so if a leader is corrupt, uh, is my brother, we let him, it's his time, it's his turn. Mm. This is his own time, and so on and so forth. So people are basically ignorant. And people are ignorant in the Western world until you had the French Revolution, which mm. now raised the thinking of a lot of people in Europe that this kind of feudal dominance and leadership and oppression and suppression of the people cannot continue. So the workers, the, 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 the poor people, after they had reached some level of understanding and education, they revolted. It happened in Russia also, the Bolsheviks. They revolted against mm. the Russian lords, and that started the advent of communism, which also 
now uh, had a tailspin uh, towards the last uh, end of the uh, last 20 or 30 years. But it was revolts by people that led to these changes. And it happens the world over. Even till today in America, there's racial segregation all over the place. The original owners of America, the Red Indians, they are nowhere to be found. The, 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 the people, the adventurers from England, from Ireland, from Scotland, from Russia, from Italy, from Germany, <clears throat> that took over America, put these people in camps and bound them, gave them drugs and alcohol, and took away their livelihood. Okay. And now America comes and lords it all over the world as if they're the policemen of the world. We're beneath Pastor. them. They Okay, I, I apologize. I, I apologize for interrupting because of time, because what you've landed on is where I really wanted us to take the conversation as well. And that's about looking at the role of the church in the wider society. You've listed a number of issues. We've known that there are those who believe that church and politics do not mix. There are those who believe that I can't make a decision that doesn't align with my religious beliefs. In the situation of Nigeria, where we've seen situations where Muslim-Muslim uh, tickets, um, mixed-faith tickets are the order of the day, and then Muslim-Muslim ticket, it, it, it connotes certain things to people on the other side of the divide. What is the role of religion in Nigerian politics? What do you think it should be? Where should religious leaders stand? Because I'll tell you personally, I think that there are a lot of religious leaders who do not uh, put truth to power. They do not speak about the issues that many Nigerians are going through. And there are times we've seen religious leaders have politicians on the pulpits and lay hands on them, and that's a blessing. That's an acceptance. That's me saying, this person, I endorse, I, I endorse yeah. this person. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Nigerians are facing what they're facing. So what's the role of religion and politics in Nigeria? The role of religious leaders in Nigeria when we have this kind of multilateral religious, multi-religious country? Well, first of all, let me speak on behalf of the politicians. Because you're a politician does not mean you're a bad person. And until you are proven to be bad uh, by your actions, uh, it doesn't mean you cannot receive a blessing from whoever your religious leader is, because you're still a member of his congregation. So let's put that out there. Politicians are not bad people. Mm. They're good politicians and they are bad politicians. If, unfortunately, there seems to be more of the so-called bad politicians, that's unfortunate, but that's a reflection of our society today. They're good journalists, they're bad journalists. So let's put that. And everybody goes to church. Everybody has some leader or the other. And your leader may or may not know what your quality of leadership is when you are approaching, okay, and so on and so forth. So a politician comes to my church, wants to run for office, wants me to pray for him. I will pray for him, okay? If he turns out to be a bad politician further down the line and he comes back to me, I would give him my opinion of what I think he has done while he was in office. And if I know that he's a proven bad politician and he comes to me for prayer, I will question or challenge the things that he has done. Uh, hopefully, we will have a discussion first, okay? Some people do that. Some people don't. That's up to them. Then, as for the role of the church or the role of religious leaders in our society, I have the following to say. Number one, first of all, religion or the practice of the worship of God is a fundamental part of society. Every society has theirs in different ways, including idol worship. It's some form of worship or the other. Two, the official uh, role of religion or Christianity or whatever is actually to teach people the ways of God, the mind of God, and what God wants. And for a long time, that has also evolved into the moral conscience and the ethical values of a person. So if a person believes that there is God and God has a role in his life, then the religion that he practices is what teaches him what God wants. And what we believe is that what God wants is far superior to any other thing that a man can want or desire. And therefore, it becomes the ground norm 
or the standard on which we tend to base our lives. And therefore, the religious leaders also then should be able to teach their political congregants what God wants. And that was what it was originally in the Bible, where, the, uh, where most of the time leadership was combined uh, as both religious and political. That was what you call the judges, people like Abraham, people like Moses, people like, uh, 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 people like Joshua, uh, people like Gideon. They were both political and religious, religious. leaders at that time, until yeah. Samuel, mm -hmm. when you now separated a little bit mm -hmm. the kingship mm -hmm. from the religion. But even up until that time, it was the religious leaders that appointed or anointed the king, even in yes. England till today. Mm -hmm. It yeah. is the Bishop of Canterbury that mm -hmm. anoints the king. Thank you so much, um, um, Pastor Ichwa Egodalo, for joining us this morning on Jasiri. Um, guys, that's uh, the senior pastor, Trinity House. So on Jasiri, well, we'll take a, a, a short break. When we return, it'll be time to look at the hot stories. Isn't that it? That's hot. I tap it. <laughs> because right now, <laughs> we'll be right back. Let's go on a very short break. We'll be right back, guys. <laughs> Africa needs its own storytellers, people who understand the continent because they're from it. People who know that news is more than just a conversation starter, it's our stories. Because these stories run deeper than headlines and segments. It's about digging deeper to get the facts and telling the human side of every single story. Not just the echoes from foreign headlines and perspectives. It's time to take back our narratives and share them in our voices. The birth of Africa's new age reporting. And this is where it begins. Right here at New Central TV. The stories that put Africa first. are free, facts are sacred, the truth is universal. How in practical terms can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? President must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. On DG 360, we give you a complete dose of everything. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We we'll delve into the issues. Dissect it so that you can understand it. Use it to take action. Digi360, dissecting the issues. Guys, here on News Central uh, TV. All right, so um, it's time to just put a, a soft caveat out uh, because the discussions we have here on Jasiri are discussions that impact society, and it's important that we foster an environment uh, uh, for open dialogue and, and critical reflection. Um, so, because hopefully, as we do so, we can explore pathways towards, you know, a more accountable and ethically sound religious landscape in Nigeria, which is very important, um, and project a future where faith and accountability coexist together harmoniously mm -hmm. for the betterment mm -hmm. of the society. It's important that we, we put this out there. Um, so, ladies, what do, you, what do you think of the perspectives that um, the senior pastor, uh, Itwa, that's <laughs> I, call it. you know, I agree with him on, on a large part, but there are areas where I think 
we're still shying away from it. That's why when you ask that question, I had to come back and say, we can't ignore what we see. We mm -hmm. can't ignore that, unfortunately, a lot of people do give autonomy of their life and their decisions to their men of God or to the people they put in that position. I was raised in the church. My father is <laughs> no, <laughs> Reverend yeah, Doctor. My I, grandfather I know was the a reference. You know, I know the so, things that yeah. I saw. I know yeah. the things that, you know, I, hey, Timmy, call. Let me say that again. But my ear, you don't know I speak your about well. Hey, Timmy, call. My ears caught in discussions yeah. when they were having. And I think that we need to realize, I think it's a cultural thing. I'll say this. Our culture does not raise children to ask questions. That's mm -hmm. changing now. Yes. And my daughter will bombard mm -hmm. me. But traditionally, our culture, yes. you, don't, you don't question elders. You don't question religious figures. You don't question decisions that are made for you. And in many instances, we translated that to the church and to the mosque, which then translated into politics. politics because a society. lot of us struggle to demand accountability mm -hmm. and to ask questions. And I think yeah. if we're not changing it at home, we need to be changing that in religious institutions. But yeah. the, the, the thing is, we all have to know that when it comes to religion, it's a personal choice. Mm -hmm. And every individual that you relate with, it is still your choice to choose what you're choosing. And I found out that it's the same in the church as in everything, whether in politics, society, everything. Anytime there's going to be a major shift, when Pentecostalism was going to come out of um, the, Roman the Roman Catholic Church, it caused a lot of divide, yes. it caused a lot of questioning. Yeah. And that is where we are at now. We need to continue to question. And that's why everybody, I agreed with what he said about knowing exactly what you think you know. A lot of people that practice the religion or call themselves Christians, many of them do not even know the tenets of what they're being taught. Yeah. And yeah. they just act no. the way they want to act. See, and for me, sometimes it's difficult for people to even have an opinion or, or way they... they <laughs> so, no, I don't, I don't think it's to difficult to have an opinion. See, believe. this is what I believe, right? The, the first thing I do not exactly agree with is nobody's perfect. Not because I, I don't think it's true, but because we have allowed that to sink in so much mm -hmm. that we have started giving excuses for people. Mm -hmm. And then the fact of knowing God for yourself cannot be overemphasized. Yes. Because, yes. look, I, I was, while I was in school, there was this church I was in. We were really, you know when they say um, someone brainwashed you? Most of the times it's mm -hmm. not the people brainwashing. It's we brainwashing ourselves. Yes. Because we've made ourselves believe that this person is almighty. Like we, oh, you know, mighty. What, what exactly? That like, divinity, what will, they're not what divinity. Will they're say, human. What will mama think? No, yes. it's so bad and that then... they have a then, way of saying mommy and daddy. Yes, then, it's so bad that guys, then when you want to travel, when you want to go on, on break, like the school is on break, mm. you'll have to ask papa. That was a student. Yes. No, that was you know, a student. I was in leadership it, all through okay, my university. But yeah, yeah, wait, wait, please, no. I need to say two more things. Oh, I'm so sorry. God. I want to follow. No, I want to follow on what Lolo said. Okay. Salvation is individual. Yes. None of us will enter heaven or whatever we believe in in the coattails of the men of God. They no. don't stand at the gate and say, "No, you follow me." Yes. 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 Never. No. Exactly. Secondly, the other thing you know about Nigerians is. We will raise all the holy hands we want to raise oh, in church. But we're and living our lives the way we The living. moment we're in the car park, the moment we're back on the street, we leave it. It's like in all the time we're it. <laughs> It's gone. Um, it's gone. Okay. okay. It's time for hot topics. We got that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's time for hot topics. And being a celebrity is hard work. Oh. Any which way you look at it, my girls here can attest to that. I'm not a celebrity. <laughs> I'm not a celebrity. <laughs> I don't want that responsibility. <laughs> okay. But whether you like it or not, but, but there is a lot of pressure to look good. Uh, mm. We all know that. Uh, look a certain way. Mm. Um, and, you know, just especially women. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially women. Yes. Yep. The, okay. pressure, the pressure is real. So who uh, is this about, Catherine? No, 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 no. I, let me just let me the take pressure, it. To us, <laughs> let, 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 the let pressure to The pressure is there getting you worse. There you go. There you go. Now this wow. is who we are. Who, this wow. is who we are talking about, wow. actually. Um, Anita Oswaha. She's. We all know her as a real worry pekin. She broke mm -hmm. the internet last year when she came out with a whole new look, thanks to having weight loss surgery. Now, when you're a public figure, your life is open to public scrutiny, mm -hmm. and as you can imagine, there have been mixed reactions online. Who's yeah. mixed reaction? Why is it yeah. your problem? Are you? I don't no, know, because understand. I remember when she came out with it, and she spoke about the fact that her husband was one of those who uh, encouraged her to have a gastric bypass surgery, mm -hmm. and that's a, 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 um, a surgical procedure where they take out part of your stomach so that you physically cannot eat more. Eat more. And so she also talked about the fact that it was she had bad knees, she had high cholesterol. The doctors were warning her about her she waist and how it could be cutting years off her life. So she made a medical decision for herself. 
And now we, so when she was, what she was before, as big as she was, she was shamed. Now she's done a procedure that's making her Look, medically better, uh -huh. that she likes, and then we're still shaming her. Are we okay? Uh, I don't so, understand. So the thing no, is, okay, right, okay. as a celebrity, and I know that people are going to... <laughs> no, not me, yep. not me, though, not me. I'm mm -hmm. just saying, like, I know people are going to come out for me, come for me for this, but as celebrities, you're automatically signed up for public opinion, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can do about it. That's, that's the situation that they found themselves in. She has been shamed for the longest time, yes. right? And even now, she has done this. Even if, you, do you know how much courage it would have taken her? The truth is, I don't know whether she's comfortable in her new look or not, but it would have taken so much courage for her because she knew what she was going to face. And it's, it's not even helping that these people are not, when they say be nice, right? Mm. We're not saying it because, I mean, we know that everybody cannot be nice at the same time. No, but everybody can be nice. I'm just wondering why we're making so much ado about a personal choice. No, it is a personal choice she made. Really? I keep telling people, yes, because I would consider myself that maybe I exist in the in the in the celebrity space because I do a lot of what film and you do too. So whether we goodness. like it or not, I keep telling people that what we put out there is curated. Yeah, it's a side of us we want people to see, and this weight loss thing. It's a personal choice that people need to make. If it's yeah, a but matter I understand of what you guys know, really. Like I when Lepa shows Bosse, saying. she's my friend, she's my sister. When she first got, when she first lost, lost all the, the weight, weight, a lot of people do not know what it takes to lose weight. Listen, if you ever did I'm not against, my past, because we are wrapping up soon. Hard. I'm not against losing weight. Mine is that. Could, couldn't we? Couldn't it have been done in a, in a tidier? It seems so drastic. How? Not, not that's nothing. gastric bypass. That's for gastric you. for you. You see, that's the thing. People are struggling, so don't blame people. Why are they struggling? Is it their cup of tea? Is it their the rent? As you said, well, their so you, cannot, you cannot. Public, you can't help it. Public, I mean, was it not December? Uh, that Isn't that one, the English the blessing uh, said? Uh, what, yeah. December? That one um, uh, musician, one singer. I don't want to mention her mm -hmm. name. Came out and said she just had a baby before she announced it. Every post leading up to that post was, why are you hiding your, your baby? pregnancy? Why are you hiding? This is yeah, so I not remember. nice. And mm -hmm. it's like, they, they feel entitled to you. It goes back to what we were talking about last it's week, where they think they own a part of the celebrity. So honestly, I wouldn't blame people for saying what they say, because no, we I'm cannot not control saying, it. What I'm saying is, anybody we can, can we say can, whatever. We, can, we won't agree. Anybody All of us will not be on the same page Which is fine. But but it's up to everyone you. Okay, not to it's up to you. I'm going to bring a gavel for you guys on this uh, on this set. <laughs> we need it. We need it because no, no, when we get into talking and arguing, Catherine. Oh, yes. Sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'll put you in timeout. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Blessings <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what Hot Topics does to us, but I'm going to sneak this in. If you're a celebrity, please wear the armor of God, because when people are behind the keyboard, they feel that anything and everything goes. Yeah. But beside that, we need to let you know that we are wrapping things up on this episode of Just It's a Monday, a very, very helpful and impactful conversation we had with the senior pastor of Trinity Church. You can, of course, find it on our social media timelines at New Central TV. Use the hashtag Just Siri. Let us know who you want us to talk to, the conversations you want us to have. If you think we're missing a Hot Topics, who do same thing. You said? Why don't men go through the same thing? Bye bye. Have a good wow. day. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. It's just bye. so hard to zip it. <laughs> men do <laughs> too. Africa is rising again.
Trending earlier this week was the three-part investigative documentary on the televangelist and general overseer of the synagogue church of all nations, late prophet T.B. Joshua. The BBC documentary titled Disciples, the cult of T.B. Joshua, alleged that he engaged in torture, rape, forced abortion and enslavement of Nigerian, British, South African and American nationals who are members of the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Some people ended up stopping going to their own churches that sit at home and watch Emmanuel TV. Everybody wanted the privilege to go with, to meet this big giant called TV Joshua. It was the worst decision I've ever made going there. I will never experience fear like it ever. The documentary has since elicited reactions online from Nigerians, home and abroad, and some have said it has left some questions unanswered, especially about the true agenda of the documentary, as well as the timing. New Central's Omolola Ololade sought to speak with officials of the Synagogue Church of All Nations to get their side of the story, but they said they weren't granted interviews at the moment. While effort to speak with officials of the church may have proved abortive. Resident of Bolongkwelu in the Kotun area of Lagos, where the church headquarters is located, had a lot to say about the late TV Joshua. Contrary to the narrative online, especially from the documentary, residents had positive tales to tell. Anything, anytime he meets man of God, TB Joshua, you understand, your problem is over. Both spiritual and physical, your problem is over. He was a good man. He's nice, he's very kind, and he's a giver. He shares a lot of things. I'm part of people that have collected out of his things. Even the Bible that I'm using right now, is one that shares it. A man that you come across in life, your life will change. To the extent that even the light we are using today is the man that provides it. The Christian Association of Nigeria posited that contrary to popular opinion, the documentary is not an indictment on the church while calling on the government to investigate questionable characters who use philanthropy to hide their wrongdoings. It's not an indictment on the church. It is an indictment on who is accused. And it, it's quite unfortunate that he is not alive to defend himself. All this would have been very, very good if he is still alive. And when he was alive, what move were taken to confront him with these issues and get him convicted? For many Nigerians, the BBC documentary places a responsibility on government to beam a satellite on the many TB Joshua's still existing across the country, investigate the veracity of the BBC's investigations and establish if and where the law was violated and take necessary remedial actions. In Lagos for News Central, Omolola Ololadi.